Dear Mr. Whitman, I am the stranger who passing desires to speak to you. Traveling interesting islands, I act as my nature prompts me for the first time. Not in America, not even in California, where the men are tolerably bold. I sailed to Tahiti in five weeks to live the real life there. For your sake, as well as my own, affectionately yours, Charles Warren Stoddard. Dear Charles, I received your beautiful, soothing book. I warmly approve of your adhesive nature. <laughs> I know that the Western world would condemn, but those tender personal relations in the Pacific Island touched me deeply. Closer to home, I'm admired by Abraham Lincoln. We see each other frequently in the streets of Washington, D.C. We never speak, but he knows me. Back at his law office in Springfield, he used to read aloud to his colleagues from leaves of grass. Imagine Abraham Lincoln's voice saying, for every atom belonging to me, as good belongs to you. And I'm admired in England. Dear Mr. Whitman, for years I have been attempting to explain what you call adhesiveness. I poured over Calamus as I used to pour over Plato, burning, panting. Tell me more about the love of friends. John Addington Simmons. Mm -hmm. Simmons writes beautiful, lovely letters. And he writes all the time. And in every letter he asks, what does Calamus mean? <laughs> he stands in the road and says, I will not move until you answer my question. But what do you think of that? Do you suppose that could be answered? I mean, Simmons is right, no doubt, to ask the question, but I am just as much right if I do not answer it. And then, Simmons writes, in your concept of comradeship, do you contemplate semi-sexual emotions and actions between men? Do I contemplate sex between men? Yes, of course I contemplate it. I celebrate it. I sing it. I suggest I enjoy it. But I can't say that in public. And I, I certainly can't write that to Simmons. <laughs> I mean, they would crucify me right off, just like they did Harvey Milk or Matthew Shepard. And what would happen to my leaves then? They'd go up in smoke like a bunch of faggoty poems, just like they did when the Nazis got a hold of my book and all the rest of Magnus Hirschfeld's library and torched it in Berlin. My era did not allow for a response that fierce. I wrote to Simmons, the questions on Calamus daze me. That Calamus allowed the possibility of such as mentioned is terrible. The pages are not to be mentioned for such gratuitous, undreamt, unreckoned, morbid inferences. Disavowed by me and damnable. And then I add, one great difference between you and me is restraint. At certain moments, I let the spirit impulse rage its utmost, its wildest, its damnedest. In my leaves of grass, I do so. Now, if he is half as clever as I believe he is, he will be able to decipher how dangerous this is. I can't possibly answer his questions in a letter. He should have visited in person like Carpenter did, but the words of a famous American author in writing, he would use them. 
He'd print them right off. So that's Simmons with his daughter. He's a married father of four. Have you ever known anybody to hide behind that masquerade? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think many of us have. <clears throat> so I add one more line, a mask he will certainly recognize. Though always unmarried, I have had six children. That's not a lie. A, a metaphor, perhaps. Give me some credit. Your sexual revolution would never have even begun in the 1960s if I had not written so freely and openly about sex and the body. Must I be made the father of gay liberation as well? <laughs> Simmons can answer his own question. Why should I answer it? I'm furtive. Well, then where was I? Oh, allies and, and children. Yes. Yes, six children. And uh, indeed, six, exactly. And I will tell you who they are. There's Charles in Tahiti, and Abe in Illinois, <laughs> and, and Simmons in England, and Edward Carpenter in England, and the fifth, the Dubliner. Yes, Oscar Wilde. Oscar's a fine, large, <coughs> handsome youngster, and he had the good sense to take a great liking to me. I find him honest, genuine, manly, frank, outspoken. And he wrote this. My dear, dear Walt, before I leave America, I must see you again. You are a factor in the heroic and spiritual evolution of the human being. The kiss of Walt Whitman is still on my lips. Oscar, my fifth child. So that's four writers, one president, and the sixth, a painter, reading leaves of grass as he painted this. <coughs> I am as one. Please know, I wrote this for you, too, hoping that you would be one of those who in future ages understand me. Take this kiss. I give it especially to you. Do not forget me. I feel like one who has done his work. I progress on. The unknown sphere, more real than I dreamed, more direct, darts awakening rays about me. So long. Remember my words. I love you. I depart from materials. Disembodied, triumphant, dead. I bequeath myself to the dirt to grow from the grass I love. If you want me again, look for me under your boot soles.
thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure to be able to share this story with you. It's been a long time in the development on my end, and I'd be happy to talk to you about it more. I'm, I'm just going to change clothes quickly, and I'll join you upstairs in the bar if you can stay. Thank you so much for coming.